wanted to make a video since the very first day I came back to São Miguel and it's been five weeks but I haven't managed yet so let's just take a walk and have a little chat uh, I was cleaning the house today so there is like stuff drying so summer is coming and that means that more of you guys are planning to come to visit the island. One of the questions I am receiving the most is that you guys are planning to come but you don't want to rent a car or that you don't have a license to drive a car and whether it is possible just to travel around by public transport or just to bike around or to walk around. When it comes to public transport, there are buses, there are no trains, there is no metro or anything we are used to from big cities. And local buses are the only form of uh, public transport. In my opinion, it is possible to get around by public transport. Um, the island is connected quite well, I would say, but the buses will not get you everywhere. So for most of the hikes, you will need to get there by a car. So in case you prefer not to rent a car, I think the best solution is just to make it somehow work and just like use a combination of uh, public buses and taxis. And you really need to plan it well, because if not, then you can just waste a lot of time waiting for buses because maybe there is this place you want to go to but there is one bus going there like every three hours or it can also happen that you will need to take two buses to get to your destination but the most important thing is just to plan it very well and also it can happen that for example the last bus uh, comes back at uh, like 5 p.m. So this is why I think that the best solution is just a combination of uh, buses and taxis. Also in the case if you do not have a license or you don't feel comfortable driving, there are agencies that organize tours. So uh, they will take you around the island. That can be a nice option as well. Many of you also have an idea whether it is okay to explore the island uh, by a bike and I would say that if you are a professional biker and this is the way you want to do it um, yeah I guess go ahead but otherwise um, I don't think I would do it personally like the capital city and around uh, Ponta Delgada the road is quite flat okay but once you leave the town um, there are a lot of hills and they can be quite steep. So just to make a conclusion, I think it is okay to use a combination of public transport and taxis. Just uh, take like numbers from the taxi drivers and you just need to plan well ahead so you don't waste so much time waiting around for buses. Then another option is, especially for solo travelers, uh, there are several groups on Facebook and uh, people post sometimes that uh, they would like to join someone who has a car. So, I mean, I guess this is also a really nice way of how to meet uh, new people or the tours. Yeah, you just book the tour and go with the tour. I think there is always a way to make the most out of it. So that's about the public transport. Then many times there are questions on my personal life, which, uh, yeah, it's true. I never really talked about this, but some of you already know. And also if we just like randomly meet on the island, which I love it. Like, so yeah, sometimes I receive those questions, like what I do and whether I work here and where I live uh, and so on. So let's just like, get into this. So I am from Slovakia and the first time I came here like three years ago it was for an exchange program and then I extended that exchange program and then I just like ended up staying. So and I work for a company in Slovakia but our schedule is a little bit different. Uh, that means that I normally work for like three or four months and then I am free for a month or like month and a half or it depends, it's like really just random. And uh, during those three or four months, I usually get sent 
to a country. The last time I was sent to Mexico, I was in Mexico for four months and after I flew back to Slovakia for like two days and after I just came back to Sao Miguel. And uh, in a few days I will leave the island again and I will start working and uh, I will spend some days in Porto and then from Porto I go to Slovakia for one week and from Slovakia uh, I go to Morocco and from there I go back to um, South America I will be in Peru, Bolivia and Ecuador uh, seems like until October so yes this is basically what I do I do not work uh, on Sao Miguel and I usually come here when I am free from work. So last year I made a video which was on the worst things about the Azores but that was kind of just my observations. So now I asked what others think and what are the worst things on the Azores according to them. I have my phone and there are some points from locals as uh, well. So let's get into it. Uh, my own worst things as a local. Uh, one. Poverty. Portugal isn't that great to begin with and Azores are at the bottom of the list. Second, remoteness. You need a flight to get anywhere even if it's just the next island. Also barely any direct flights to almost anywhere but mainland. Okay, so there are some direct flights. There are not so many. There are some to America, some to Canada. There is a direct flight to Porto, to Lisbon, but to get to most of the places you do need to take a connecting flight. Um, it's usually from Porto or from Lisbon. Okay, I had to move because people came and it started to be super noisy. Um, anyway, okay, we go on to the next one. We are Canadian tourists here since beginning of April and leaving in two weeks and for now here is my list. Not meaning all is bad at all, but the topic here is the worst things. Number one, the bad service in most restaurants. In Canada, waitresses and waiters count a lot on their tip for their salaries, so the service is almost always polite, efficient, friendly. Here most waiters look like they are miserable. They come to get your order and don't say a word waiting for you to tell what you want, looking at you like what did I do with my life when they are not simply rude. They drop your food on the table without a word. Very bad service overall. It's not everywhere but in most places I've been to. I think this really depends where you come from. I'm from Slovakia and in my opinion the service in Slovakia is worse than here. The, the way animals are treated, dogs on trains, cats not being taken care of, lots of animals being driven over. Of course there is also people who do care. There was also a comment on the absence of ecology consciousness, that the fields are full of chemicals, there is often plastic and trash in the riverbeds. The health seems quite generally bad here. So many fat kids and adults, there is cigarettes, dispensers everywhere and even in restaurants, sugar seems like the main food source here too. If you want to hike and stop in a cafe or a bar to grab something to eat, I dare you to find anything healthy. This is... Okay, this is not something I particularly noticed here. I do not think most of the kids are fat and I also don't feel like that there is sugar in everything. I don't know, anyone else had this feeling that there is too much sugar in uh, food? You can let me know, It's um, this is an interesting uh, point for me. But then there is another point on how animals should be uh, treated. Dogs tied on short chains, ropes and horses alone in fields. As next, there is a comment from a local. The weather in winter is awful. It's the kind of weather that depresses you. You will spend full weeks without seeing a clear sky. Winters really can get like that yes I agree the next lack of offer or high prices in local stores make you buy almost everything online lack of people that perform services like plumbing electricity gardening carpentry constructions house cleaners and so on makes you pay a lot of money every time you need one now this is a real thing yes I agree 
Lack of places where you can learn courses about different areas, especially after working hours. Lack of renting options at affordable prices. If you have kids and you want to send them to the university, it will cost a lot more money than for someone that lives in the mainland. At least for the ones that live in an island that's not Sao Miguel or Terceira, these have a few options for proceeding studies locally. Um, only. Uh, I love you so much. Oh. <laughs> I watch uh, you uh, on YouTube. Oh, thank you. You want to say hi? Okay. Yes, come, but the camera is here. You have to go hi. down. You have to go more down, I think, because it's very down. Hi. <laughs> hi. And what's your name? Uh, Sarah and A. Sarah and A. Nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> See you, bye. bye! Only one private hospital and it's in Sao Miguel. There are a couple of hospitals on Sao Miguel and several health centers. Then the next one, in most islands it's almost as difficult getting from one to the other as traveling to the mainland. Well, I would say, especially in the winter season, it can get a bit more complicated. Due to the fact that everything has to be imported, literally everything is expensive, from food to furniture not a lot of foreign food available. Sometimes even the big supermarket here didn't have something as simple as spinach for about two months. This I never experienced, but uh, if you have a similar experience, you can uh, let me know. I always had a feeling that there is everything. And actually when I moved to Sao Miguel, I was surprised in a very positive way. I feel like the minimum wage here is being exploited and a lot of people work on minimum wage and it almost seems like the standard. Little schooling options after high school and having to move to the mainland just to go to uni isn't very affordable, which means a lot of people have low education, not a lot of specialized jobs. I have a university degree in social work and there aren't really any jobs available for that. Traveling as stated above, I'm lucky I can at least get to two other islands by boat, which will take up to an hour maximum. There is a comment from someone who is visiting uh, the Azores. I am here visiting Sao Miguel for the rest of the week and my biggest complaints are parking when visiting landmarks or even in the villages and not finding reliable information online when it comes to restaurants being open. I think these were the most common answers which were just... Yes. Uh, uh, please give me your card on Instagram. Yes, I can give you. But uh, you have your phone because I have no internet. Okay, you can. No, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Sorry it's a battery. It's a battery. No problem. So, of course, the Azores are a beautiful place, but there is no perfect place on the planet. I still recommend you very much to visit this place if you're considering it. There was a really nice idea among the comments to make a video on the best things on the Azores. Uh, so, yeah, I like this idea and comment. So, as a local, it's hard to tell you what's the best because I have never lived anywhere else. Probably a lot of stuff that's the best is just something I take for granted. But some things I enjoy. Good access to nature and no dangerous wildlife to worry about. That's true. Them being remote is actually a benefit in some ways because there is a bigger pressure to have important facilities locally. A normal mainland small town might not have a certain facility because you can just drive two hours to a bigger city and have access to it. Since that's not an option on these small islands, you will pretty much never be very far from anything. Weather, sure it's moody but it's never really cold and never unbearably hot. So yeah, that was a nice input. I like it. I agree, we should make a video on the best things about the Azores. Anyway, I will not be on Sao Miguel for some months. So yes, I will see you from Morocco and then from South America.